you know, it's really a joy to hear the conscious lyrics over top because, you know, as we see what's going on around the world, it's very much uh, comparable to the end of days. So what made you, the two of you write this song, record this, please? Cassie? Yeah. <laughs> um, current times, man, you know, just uh, to sit down to write a song and how could you not catch an energy from if you turn on the news or if you flipping through Instagram or Facebook. Or just seeing the way the it, youth it, it, act it, it, today, huh? Seeing the way the youth act today, seeing the way the adults yeah, act today. Yeah. I don't blame the youth alone, not at all. Yeah, and uh, maybe our biggest problem is the adults right now, even though the youth are probably just uh, doing what they see. And you know, I, I and think that you just made a very good point because most of the time the youth are they're calling for attention, um, not necessarily to the problems, but to themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm not a father, but <laughs> sisters have told me before. Yeah, Sister Barbara, I'm telling you. <laughs> sisters have said, Sister God made you a father for all the children. I never mm -hmm. thought of that that way, but I think me mothers too. have a real appreciation of men who are sensitive to the youth. And so for that, I give thanks because... You know, I've been on the front line, as far as that is concerned, doing things for the children straight out of North Philly, not too far from where we are right now. Absolutely. But I've always enjoyed doing things for the children, and it's, um, it cannot help but represent the older ones as well, because when you're doing for the children, you're doing for the elders as well. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes, it's true. And I think that, you know, Jadi and I have dedicated our lives um, we've been together many, many years in this creative act of creating conscious music. And I can attest to that. Conscious theater, yeah. too. <laughs> yes. Um, and um, we were actually, the, the first thing we wrote was um, a musical called Birds of One Feather, and it was about how you can come from different places on the earth and you know, show up with what you are bringing and share that without losing a piece of who you are. And that's old school. We wrote that for the first ever Philadelphia Fringe Festival. We performed that musical. We did all the music. It was like a rock opera for um, two years at the Philadelphia Fringe Festival and um, incorporated our friends, friends of Gaia from the mountains of Appalachia. Um, and they were a puppetry group um, to come and um, act out, you know, the musical. So what I'm saying about that is our journey into consciousness has stemmed many years, many years even before that. And I feel like for this song, you know, um, Derek really, he wrote all the lyrics. But when I first listened to the lyrics myself, I was like, this is a compilation of all of our years of consciousness that we have collected in what is happening around us, um, what is happening in the, what has happened in the past, what is happening in the future, and what has just occurred. And so I feel like I said, man, these lyrics are amazing and right on, and um, because they are not just lyrics of this moment, they are lyrics of all the moments gathered together, you know, for the good of humanity, for the good of the children and the youth. And I myself am a teacher. I've been a teacher for, I don't know, like 20 something years as well, working with the youth. And you know, um, Dub Warrior, you also have <laughs> taught the youth. Oh yeah, uh, I know what it is to be years. in the classroom and I admire yeah. teachers today because we have so much to deal with. One is the onslaught of modern technology and how it interrupts our human flow with things. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's overbearing the demands of the youth who really want access to that technology too. Yes. And when we were younger, you know, I'm sure the engineer, Kennedy, you could testify to this, we didn't get stuff that the youth get today mm -hmm. so quickly. Yes. I mean, we either had to wait till we were older <laughs> before we got anything, yes. but just to say, I want that, a cell phone? Yeah. Oh, you couldn't get a phone until mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. were a working 
a good yeah. citizen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But what that also meant is that having to wait for things, your consciousness, your spirit, and your physical body had time to process what it is that you wanted to, it, to come to. Mm. And so you had to, you know, really live life and process life. It's much the same way in teaching and in lessons um, and in just living. You know, the things that come quick and that come easy are not things that we really can digest and integrate into our whole being, body, mind, and spirit. So allow me to say, this is where the artistry comes in. We as artists and musicians, you know, we have to give thanks that we can express ourselves in a manner that's not really commonplace in a society. But truthfully speaking, this is what drew me to music when I was a youngster. The fact that music addressed a part of my being that ordinary uh, citizens in society was dealing with, particularly in neighborhoods and locales and all of that. So when I became aware of my love for not only music made in America, but music made particularly out of England, because in the older days, well, <laughs> olden days, in the younger years, the Beatles, uh, the Bo Brummels, uh, Led Zeppelin, Stones, mm -hmm. all of that had attracted my ear, music from across the pond, as they say. Mm -hmm. uh, then I must admit, hearing Millie Small singing My Boy Lollipop and Desmond Decker doing The Israelites, it drew my attention to Jamaica, of the island life. So this is where, I, you know, I would love to say this is where you come in, where we started already. But Derek, tell me something about reggae music that inspired you, that you guys have just been doing this for quite some time. Talk to the people. Uh, yeah, man, I grew up uh, hearing reggae and feeling uh, like it, took me to a different place, man, you know, and it was and it was speaking about conscious things that I had thought of before and of course the backbeat and the bass is just catching and and from that I was like, you know, uh it it infects you with it, you know, you get like Peter Tosh would say, Reggae my light is, you know, where it's <laughs> oh, like, yeah, man, you almost like sometimes you're like, Well, I have to give it a break and maybe there's other other music out there but it's such an all encompassing thing and you can never get to the bottom of it. There's so much different types of reggae and so many brilliant writers and, you know, the energy of it is absolutely positive, you know. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I build on what you just said because to me, the initial stage of reggae music had its impact on my psychic, which was island life, you know. Yeah. Certainly the syntax, the... Uh, I would say the emphasis on language, you know, that was always a drawing point for Jamaica. Absolutely. Just the patois. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and yeah. so to acquire that understanding, or as Rasta would say, overstanding of the use of language and linguistics, to me, has always been a joy for me. Because in the beginning, I didn't understand, but I did ask questions. What did you say? Could you repeat that? What does that mean? It's amazing. But you know, that's the cultural yeah. significance that we have as human beings. But many of us get stuck mm -hmm. on locale and politics that we don't take a moment to really exchange from a humanitarian perspective, yeah. you know? And yeah, so I, like you, not born in Jamaica, but I love reggae music and I've begun to play reggae for a number of years, at least 40 years in my Mm. show of appreciation of the music. And so when I Absolutely. became aware of I and I Orchestra and you, you, you know, the group was doing the same thing, it really, sure. really was a badge of honor to be linked with you. So Thank you. So now we, we just heard... Likewise. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. Likewise. Well, yes. you know, since we're going to talk about the band for a moment, <laughs> I joined this band, uh, Gunner G, the engineer, I joined this band playing keyboards initially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. right. You played it all, actually. Yeah, actually I think you played every played instrument everything. in the band. Would well, you so, say that again? Yeah. I don't think they heard you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Timmy Tanzania has played every instrument. Timmy in Tanzania I, I has, and one very point, well. Not only live, but in the studio, too. Yes, yeah. yes. 
Well, it's always a joy because that is the essence of being artists and musicians. When you're doing yeah. something that you really love and you enjoy yeah. it, you know, you're prolific. You know, yeah, the inspiration is always there. I talked to an engineer a lot about being here at UTM Radio Studio and my enjoyment of the atmosphere being here. What do you think it's of the beautiful, place? It's beautiful, beautiful place, man. So beautiful. Yeah, big up, G. Yes. Wonderful. Thank, thank you for having us. Yeah, it's great to be um, here, man. Yeah. But also, what's beautiful about this space is the creative energy in the space and the accessibility of there's there's art everywhere nice. and creation yeah, energy nice. everywhere and there's new construction material but there's also these old strong wooden beams to feed you so there's this balance of like i was saying yeah. before yeah. you know the past and the present and the future to come and when you walk into this space, you really feel like that. And as an artist, that creates the vortex. I got you. No, it's but true, though. It's, a, it's true, man. It, well, we want to bring in some more sounds from Aina Orchestra because really and truly, you, you have so much music. Thank so we're you. just going to give a little snippet, you know, yes. just a little yes. Yes. frips of what we enjoy with our artistry as uh, musicians and spokespeople, because we have a lot to say, and a lot of things that we're saying is not being heard today on the yeah. radio. Yeah. The youth are not hearing it, That's and other sure. adults are not hearing it. That's for yeah. sure. It's true. That's so, for sure. we're going to feature once again Ayana Orchestra in the mix. Yeah, you listen to the sound of Ayana Orchestra right here at UTM Radio. Satellite Link! Ah. Yo, it's international. It's not just local, it's national, international, it's global, it's universal. Hey, too much pressure, pressure getting hotter. And so when we listen to I and I Orchestra, we appreciate the consciousness that comes through the music. We appreciate the state-of-the-art production, state-of-the-art technology. And uh, hey, Derek, tell us about that track. What, what made you do that? Well, I have to give a shout out to uh, Charlie Paterno, mm -hmm. Preexist, who big, big up Charlie. produced the track also. And he, he, Charlie is the man when it comes mm -hmm. to production. So he helps you go dig deep, man, you know. And um, again, watching around me, you know, I live in Philadelphia. Crime rate is high. Yeah. I grew up in Baltimore, D.C. area. I saw riots. Same thing. I saw thing, riots man. here. Yeah. I saw how the cops treat people. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, this is nothing and, uh, new. This has been going on for years yeah. and years LA, and years. Yeah, it goes on and on. So, you know, you witness these things, and I feel like consciously I have to have to, have to speak on it. But mm -hmm. the rebellious energy of the music really adds to what the words are trying to say. Well, know? I have to add this uh, questionnaire. You see, we've already heard two tracks from you. I know that they're recent productions. Or over the past couple of years. But yes, um, yes, how is the public's response to the music that you're doing? Uh, the public that I can reach, they love the music. I'd always love to reach more public, though. <laughs> well, and I, I have to bring you in, Cassie, on this here part of the point of view being expressed because really yes. and truly we're in a time when we're finding that more women are in demand to be part of the, the runnings, would you say? Mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting. I'm always, I'm so happy. I want, you know, everyone who um, feels, you know, they have something to express and share and come to the table with to be able to do that. So I welcome more women to the table. I welcome everyone to the table. And at this point, it's really about like consciousness to the table. Come to the table. We need to hear your voice. Um, it's very hard to do so. There are a lot of obstacles and forces pushing against to suppress. And I think it's just, again, back to the children, mm -hmm. like, just keep in your mind, you know, just keep pushing forward. Those words need to be heard. They need to be shared. And in relation to music, when you are a songwriter, it's not, it's the words, the words are the consciousness. But I wanted to say, often it is forgotten that a certain thought process or a certain word wouldn't even be chosen were it not for the specific note. 
So when we talk about um, the word sound have power, we were talking about earlier when, when we were talking about conscious lyrics and coming to reggae music. Um, but the music itself, every note opens something in you and inspires something, not only in you, but in someone else. So oftentimes I will, I write my lyrics with the melody because it is the union of the muses that through that sound, that tone, that's what's opening the door to have access to that thought process of what I want to say right now. And so sometimes we'll say, well, that doesn't really, you know, work with this song. Can you sing those lyrics over top of this song? Sometimes you can, but most of the time you're like, no, nah, I'm going to sing a different song to that, <laughs> you know, because it's, it, they're keys. They're very, very special, fragile keys, intricate keys that open up doorways. And when I specifically speak of conscious music and the healing of music, the, those, it matters. Those keys matter. That fine tuning matters because it's not just what you say and it's not just what you play, it's how you say it and what you're playing and how you're playing it that opens the door for that consciousness, that greater energy, that universal love force and allows people to be moved by it and allows yourself to be moved by it. And then outside of that, after that allows you to then transform that and move that into another act of creation in your lives. Sort of like when we just play another track from I and I Orchestra, we're just going to move it to another light. We're going to move it from over there to over here. It's in your sound system. It could be in your headphones. The sounds of I and I Orchestra right here at UTM Radio. Two. Two. Yeah, you listen to the sounds of I and I Orchestra in the mix. Uh, we're interviewing Cassiopeia and Derek regarding I and I Orchestra. And I have to say to you, through the years, I've always enjoyed playing with the band. Um, but there's one place that we played. It reminded me of a cosmic experience. And that was um, when we played The Fire. Mm -hmm. No, the, the um, yeah, The Fire. Oh, the and I always thought outside. that it was a... a oh, the outside one. Uh, yeah, right, I always yeah. thought it was... Spirit, a... Spirit Leaf Gal Festival. Oh, okay. Say Spirit, that again, please. Spirit Leaf Gal Festival, right? <laughs> yeah. Leaf Gal, yeah. It was just the street. Leaf Gal is the street. <laughs> well, the reason I mention it is because the alley. consistently playing that for a number of years, yeah. it reminded me of that area, especially where the club is, but in the street like that, it was like a vortex. Yes, very much so. I remember telling you that. Yeah, ago. you know, it's a, it's a strange place, too, because you're looking at the church right there. You're basically underneath the steeple of the uh, mm. St. John Newman Church, so yeah. it's, it's, it's just energy to that block there for some reason. Yeah. Plus, the fire has such a strong energy, you know, it's um, yeah, the fire's one been of supporting the only music for years in the female run venues in Philadelphia. Yeah. So wait a minute, so slow down for a minute, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's try this again. Let's give a shout out to the fire. Yes, the establishment to itself. Karen. Because yeah. I've played there many times and I've enjoyed fire. playing there yeah. with you all and other musicians. So you saying the management is based on who now? So her name is Karen and her Karen and her husband were the original owners of Philadelphia Bar and Grill. Many years ago her husband was mugged mm. walking home um, with her after a dinner I believe and he um, he was fighting off the offender and actually ended up in a coma and passed away mm -hmm. many years ago. Karen carried on the venue with the help of other promoters and bar managers. And so I want to give a shout out to Derek Dorsey, who for many, many years yeah, um, up, not only up, managed the fire, but many venues in town and always was a huge supporter of I and I Orchestra. Now, yeah, Derek is shows, yeah. going through his own health problems and tribulations right now. So we want to say big up, Derek, sending lots of healing your way. All right, then we have to say, what's his name again? Give us his name again, please. Derek Dorsey. Derek Dorsey. So you are being mentioned with 100% appreciation yes. right here at UTM Radio. 
dot yes. com. Yes. All right. In addition, we as musicians and artists, we played so many places. I and I <laughs> orchestra. You know, we've done a couple of festivals that I'm really proud. Yes. Particularly playing at the Mad Music Center. <laughs> yes. Um, but so many places, or in town and out of town. You know, playing in J Jersey, what Jersey City, or what is that? Oh man. Where did we play in Jersey? Well, you know, when we did the acoustic set. Oh, Delaware. Oh, okay. Yeah. Big up Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah. Yep. So the, the appearances are not only extensive, but to me, it's a reminder that the band is really appreciated wherever you play. Yeah, what so we've say? played New York, New Jersey, of course, many places around Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a huge state. <laughs> well, here's the question. How long have you been together? Uh, the band has been together, let's see, about 23 years. So I and I Orchestra got yeah. started about 23 years ago, huh? mm -hmm. live and direct, right? Yes, really 24 yeah. with the, our, when we first come together. You could say 25 when we conceived our first musical now she's together. Now dating us a little bit. Yeah, right. we're, we're I know. Sticking with the when 20, we created, with the 23. Yeah, first of all, right, right in the yeah. middle with the 23 yeah. is a great number. So we're going to stop there. <laughs> but uh, but, but we, we, we began to play out. Our, our first two shows ever were actually. So shout out to Jamaican Dave. Thank you. Um, he. Um, Yes, yeah, Jamaican Dave has shows. helped a lot of local artists. Yes, yes, And he we has. do appreciate his yes. um, part in the artist's growth and recognition from the masses. Yes. And it's a joy to hear you mention him, yes. particularly in light of where you were playing years ago. So imagine, because the pandemic changed so much. Yes. You know, a lot of clubs closed down, as yes. the specials would say. Well, he gave us our first two shows Who's ever. That? It was maybe 2001. Yeah, I like think Lee, Lee Scratch Perry yes. with Mad Professor yes. and the Robotics Band 2001 mm -hmm. at the TLA. It was a great show. And Mad Professor dubbed this. I don't know if you remember. Wow. I think you were with us, Terry. We were big. I'm looking around like, what, you know, I'm looking at the guitarist like, you're not making, it don't look like you're making that noise. And I look at the back and there's a bad professor back yeah, there. I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, and the other uh, great experience for us, as you just mentioned, Derek, is that we had an opportunity to open up for Lee Scratch Perry. Yes. And, you know, as they say, may he rest in peace. So being able to uh, be on the same stage as a legendary figure of his magnitude was an honor. And I give thanks to I and I Orchestra for allowing me to be in a band that at that moment we could play in that manner. And one of the coolest videos of me singing came out of that. <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah, that uh, Ardmore Music Hall show was yeah. like just before Perry. Lee Shout Perry out passed. to the Ardmore Music Hall. Shout right? out to the Ardmore Thanks. Music Hall, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That Thanks was for bringing shows Scratch like the that. second time around for I and I. Yeah, and that wow. was Yeah, so was we opened brilliant. for Lee Scratch and Mad Professor um, in 2000, 2001. Had a show right after that, opening for Gregory Isaacs, which was really interesting, because I wasn't the w the we went out and it's packed. It's pretty much a sold out show, and women have like roses and like underwear, and I was like, uh, "Don't give up your consciousness." You know, they they really wanted the sugar to come. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I heard about the third song in. I have to say, like I heard from the crowd, you know, at first it was a little hard. <laughs> and then I heard from the crowd, oh, I like their lyrics. Mm -hmm. Oh, she can sing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a great band. And I was like, oh my goodness, thank you so <laughs> much, Ja. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, with that in mind, we have another little track that we'd like to play from I and I Orchestra. And it goes like this. Yeah, the sounds of I, I, and I orchestra. So listen, Derek, we were talking for a moment, man. How did you get a sitarist on this track? Local Philadelphia guy. Whoa. <laughs> and the tabla player is local too. Oh, 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 quite unique in that whole production. Yeah, 
Pick up Rodham Marinelli and big and up Thomas is King. Is the whole one. album on the album is on this motif, right? On this premise. That album is kind of me just stepping into them vibes a little bit, you know. Mm. I mean, it's all communities. Just I'm writing from home and have a it's kind small of trippy home too, studio man. and I, mean, no, like I have spacey, friends to play man. instruments. So it's like, hey, would you, do you think you could play that on this track? What key is it in? <laughs> you know, like C. <laughs> flat or something. I don't know what they're at, but they want it. They just, you know, so you're like, okay, well, I'll try to make a track where, or a, feel you one that you can fill in the vibes on it. It just worked out like that. You know? It sounds good. And before we close up this little interview, this segment of today's show, by the way, we say thank you for being here. Thank you for coming in. Thank, thank you for uh, a beautiful experience. Uh, being part of this here experience right here in the studio, UTM Radio. But Thank before we go, let me ask, when is the next show with I and I Orchestra? When is the next show with I and I Orchestra? <laughs> uh, so we'll be we back have with community. station identification right after we're, these uh, messages. We're, um, <laughs> I know we're August 5th, 4th or 5th, first Saturday in August at August uh, 5th. Caribbean Wine festival in oh, yeah. Rising Sun, Maryland, which is okay. beautiful, beautiful space. Yeah, I remember playing time. there many times, and it's an enjoyable ride outside of uh, it's beautiful. the concrete jungle. I mean, when One hour from Philly, one hour from Baltimore, you know, it's a uh, super good time. And we're also August 19th, mm -hmm. I believe at uh, Lion's Heart. Lion's okay, we're going to go through right. one Radio more time Festival. because, surprise, we're going to give you another track from I&I &I Orchestra. It goes like this. It is a super mix. Why? Because we have special guests today, I&I &I Orchestra, Cassiopeia, and Derek. Um, singers, uh, visionaries, um, parents, uh, you know, of I and I Orchestra, and I have played with them through the years and always been a fantastic experience. So it's a joy to be in the studio and being able to play some tracks, you know, and have you in that aspect. I ain't mean for that to rhyme, but that's the way it goes sometimes. We have one more track before we go. <laughs> and, so, well, anything you want to say before yeah, we go? I, I just want to say thank uh, UTM Radio. It's a beautiful, beautiful space, man. Thank God. Uh, thank you, Timmy. My pleasure. It's what we do, man. Aspect. Yeah, but for real, you're, you're like boots on the ground. Literally with your guitar over your shoulder. Uh, for real, for years, Everywhere. man. Coming to rehearsal. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and, and, and thank you uh, for the support, for the music, man. And, and that's, keep doing it. Well, it, it is a joy to have you come in to the program and experience what it is, UTM Radio. It's a great place to be. There are so many things that we have in mind for the upcoming summer for the youth. And maybe we might do some type of special presentation where we can bring in I and I Orchestra to play for the youth, you know? But we will discuss that in the near future. In the meantime, between time, which Jimmy Hendrix said it's a groovy time, we got one more track, which I'm proud to be a member of on this joint here. People! People, are you with me? Listen keenly. <laughs> 